Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna go over this watch that I pretty recently bought. It's a Shirojiri, which from my little bit of research, turns out to be a city in Japan. Hope you can read that. It just says, it's very small and fine print, but it says water resistant plastic, stainless steel back, W180, Japan. That's all that it says. So it doesn't tell you the brand or anything on the front. It just says on the front, light activated quartz, Japan. So I guess when this watch was new, it probably wasn't that expensive being that it doesn't even have its brand anywhere on the front or the back. I was only able to, at least I think, find maybe the brand from opening up the back panel. So why did I open up the back, back panel? Because, well, when I got it, it was actually working. It seemed to work anyway. It appeared to work. And the ad said something to the effect of, it seems to work. And it did say 1 o'clock. And so I went ahead and set the time, which wasn't too hard to do. Uh, it's pretty standard, just using this one auxiliary button right here. You can uh, go through the pretty much, much intuitive uh, menus to set the hour and the minutes and the day and the date. So I went ahead and set everything, and it seemed to be working okay. However, later on, uh, I looked back at the watch again and it said one o'clock again. And I thought, well, that's weird. Why does it say one o'clock again? Well, it turns out if you were to cover up the LCD display, excuse me, not LCD display, if you were to cover up the solar reactive cells, whatever they're called, then it would lose its time. It was all, basically, basically what I thought and what turned out to be true was the battery that will run the watch while there's no, while there's no light coming in wasn't working at all. So I went on the Facebook group for, uh, for vintage digital, digital watches. And of course, some people suggested that that was the case as I thought it was. And I went ahead and ordered a battery about a week later, it came in, put the battery in and actually that totally fixed the problem. So now you can cover it up for as long as you want, even overnight, of course, and it doesn't lose its time or anything. So it's actually working really nice right now. And uh, I like the watch. What I think actually is going on with this watch and the brand is I think that it was probably sold by some company, you know, I could imagine Sears or who knows what, selling the watch without a brand at all. And this maker, uh, Shirojiri, Shiro probably makes watches for all different companies because I also did find when I did some searching this other watch and it had in the description Shirojiri so probably this Shirojiri makes watches for uh, whoever basically pays them to make watches. And that's why there's no real brand on it anywhere. However, on the one that I found online, it did have a brand, uh, which I don't remember, but I'll, I'll put it up on the screen right now. So it, it, you know, it, it's pro most probable to me that this company makes watches for other brands. And in this case, the brand that wanted it made didn't put their name on it at all. So it's really f hard to find the history on it. I haven't yet seen another watch just like it. So I, I can't guess the year really. Uh, it would be great if somebody watching this, you know, knows about, you know, vintage watches, vintage d digital watches, or has any idea uh, about the, the year of it. I would love to know that. Uh, if I were to take a guess, which is pretty uneducated, I would have to guess, I don't know, 1986, 1988. I, I don't know. But anyway, um, I did find one other thing when I searched Shirojiri. Um, it seems to be that that's also a city where Seiko makes watches. So it could be that Seiko has a division called Shirojiri, Shirojiri which um, makes watches for other companies. And they have made digital watches, uh, so that does seem like a possibility. If anybody has any knowledge on this, I would love to know. Please leave a comment in the description. So you might be wondering how much I paid for this watch. It was $5 on Facebook Marketplace with $3.75 shipping. And the seller had sold a lot of items before, I think over 300 items, and they had like, you know, five stars or whatever. So I felt pretty comfortable um, buying it from them online. And they were somewhere out of state, I think Virginia. And uh, sure enough, it did come in like about a week. And then, so I was out $8.75 in total, $8.75 in total. And then I had to buy a battery, and I think that cost another $4 off Amazon.com, but I actually got two batteries, not just one. All in all, I'm out, what, $12, $13? That's not too bad at all, I think, for a very unique, I think very cool-looking watch. It's very small, I should also add. 
even even on me, and I, I don't have a big wrist, it's, it's even a pretty small face. Let me see if I can get it on and show you. So the way the clasp works on this one is it just hooks over here like that. And then when you close this, when you close this down, it, it just kind of um, connects like that. And that's how it sits. Now actually, currently the band is a little bit too big for me. I'd like to make it a little bit smaller. As you can see, it's a bit loose. So if anybody knows about this type of mechanism, because I did look at it and I, I'm not sure how to figure it out, um, I, I need to resize it a little bit. I do find it slightly difficult to take off sometimes. There we go. You know, I suppose it takes some practice, but uh, obviously it's going to be possible somehow to move to move uh, this clasp further on the strap, on the bracelet, as they say. So if you have any idea about how to do that, I would, I would really appreciate that information. So I suspect it has to do with this. It's actually a spring. It's like a pin slash spring from what I can tell. And I suspect you need to somehow lift that spring and then allow it, allow it to slide. I did try to get a very, very small screwdriver underneath there and it really wasn't, I wasn't able to lift it. So before I break it, I thought I'd go ahead and ask the community. Um, to take off the back plate was a little bit unconventional for me as well. There's no screws back here, but rather you have to first of all take one of the um, bracelet halves off and then you can access these tabs which are part of the back plate and just pry them and then it pops up, pops back down in place. You do need to be careful about the seal on the back because you got to make sure that it's back in place properly. Okay, well, that's about it for the watch. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any information about this watch, again, please leave them in the comments. If you have any opinions on the watch, please leave them in the comments. If you have any questions about watches in general, please leave them in the comments. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.